Well, that he carries on. Well, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, the common going laborers were moaning over shots of whiskey. Not duty free anymore. Languid pond gym bars. Huh? <laughs> yeah, they reminiscent about the golden days when uh, Portuguese created all these jobs and uh, made life a lot easier. Now the energy vacuum, meager cash flow, hey, particularly stifling for the gold. Yeah. And what? To have a conservative federal bureaucracy, Hindu, all the way up in New Delhi to make all their decisions for them? Doesn't sound like liberation to the natives down here. Well, mercifully, a mere six years later, the hippies began to trickle into Goa and live nomadically in bamboo huts on the beach. Oh, Ooh. yeah. And small-time entrepreneurs like Joe Banana, I mean, we're in his cafe right now, uh, made parts of their homes into chai shops. And Joe, uh, Joe Banana actually had a cot under his chai shop window. Or, you know, teeny little... Well, it was his house, actually. And uh, he stayed up all night uh, to sell uh, whatever hippies wanted. Uh, candles, matches, batteries, uh, tobacco, snack food. Uh, I mean, they urgently needed it. They got the munchies on the full moon. Late night trippers. Joe always had eternal bags of fatigue under his eyes. He looked haggard. Well, uh, the hippies raised the meager standard of living. Remember the daily wage, like Xavier said, uh, 10 cents a day, one, one one rupee a day. So when a hippie rented a house for $5 a month, it was equivalent to 50 days of, of labor. I mean, this is mean like chopping up lava into blocks to build houses, road work. I mean, the most hard work. Well, seems like the hippies arrived just in time. <laughs> <sighs> to replace the Portuguese culture. I mean, look, at they're used to Europeans. They've lived with them for 500 years. So this wasn't so freaky for the Goans to have a bunch of Europeans and Americans come on, flooding on in. And, uh, yeah. All right. The dates about Eddie, the Portuguese, the early hippie scene, successfully sorted out on to celebrate. I, I order a, th a thick slice of carrot cake and become a melted down lizard lounge in the German bakery. Fresh bread. Um. And read all the language, English language newspapers. I'm a newspaper freak. I'm a trained photojournalist. <laughs> uh, and there's about five English newspapers. Now, Times of India, the most professional and with the most in-depth international articles. And uh, oh, I'm looking at the paper today. Oh yeah, and they're interviewing the uh, renowned Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh. Uh, And uh, yeah, he eventually went back to Vietnam, finally let him back in after, you know, becoming a guru in France for 50 years. So, well, here's what Thich Nhat said. Uh, the, 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 how would you react or, or what would you say to a terrorist like these Pakistani guys that just shot up Bombay and killed 167 people? Uh, Thich Nhat Hanh said, first, I would listen. Why had he acted so cruelly? 
Uh, I would try to understand all the suffer suffering that brought him to do that. It might not be easy to listen to. So I would have to remain calm and lucid. In this way, an atmosphere of support would be created for this person and uh, those connected to him. Mm. So they could share completely and trust that they were really being heard. When we react out of fear and hatred, we do not yet have a deep understanding of the situation. Our action will be very quick, superficial way of responding to a situation and not much true benefit and healing will occur. Oh, oh, oh. True Buddhist wisdom. <sighs> Soothes my soul. Well, after breakfast, I walk along the beautiful back roads, sandy roads, to uh, Joe Banana's Chai Shop. Mm -hmm. Blissful stroll around along the Arabian Sea coast, yeah, also, uh, for my next interview and pick up, you know, because you all remember, you know, Eddie Sinkova Beach for the second time. And he discovers uh, that the crash pad he rented the previous winter had been renovated into a joint named Vince's Bar. So he, uh, he migrates uh, to the main hippie scene, 50 kilometers north uh, on Baga Beach, adjacent to Collingwood Beach. Well, Eddie cannot find a going home large enough for his tribe. So he stays with different hippies as a house guest, uh, a night here, a night there. And uh, well, this disappoints his staunch friends, David and Sherry, who lived with him in Culver Beach crash pad the winter before. 